All righty, traders. You know, I've been talking here for about a minute and um, realized that you couldn't hear me. Can you guys hear me now? Everybody hopefully can hear me now. You guys can hear me now. Yep. Okay. My, my bad. I'm sitting, here, I'm sitting here having a conversation with you guys for like the last minute. And um, well, there you go. Um, glad you guys didn't hear me because I didn't really want you to say anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, what I was talking, what I was saying is, you know, hey, we're, you know, here we are. We got equities. Um, my, uh, uh, my, the the equities are sitting here, you know, knocking its head up against resistance, and, um, uh, you know, oh wow, that's evil. I'm sorry, I was just looking at something. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at something real quick. Um, so the the, uh, the S and P is right up against resistance. We have to be really, really careful with you know the markets here. I mean, you know, there, it's one thing to be you know expecting a move from here, but the reason why I'm I'm mentioning this is that we've gone pretty far in a lot of assets. Specifically, you know, specifically. I would say the yen pairs have moved quite a bit. Now you can you can argue you know that they've moved because of yields or whatever, but um, or you know, but but if if you look at how far they've gone in relationship to what the equities have done, um, the the thing about the uh, the the uh, S and P here. Is the S and P hasn't moved that that much yet? The yen pairs have, and so what I'm more worried about is that if we do actually start to pull back here, you know, from in the S and P, these yen pairs may fall a lot. The flip side of that is because you gotta you gotta be careful about this, is if you get a move higher in the S and P, the yen pairs are going to explode higher, right? So. That's one of the things that I, I I think we need to be paying really close attention to because I think there's a, a lot of um uh you know a lot of um you know Sorry, I was just reading one thing. Um, there's a lot of risk at these these levels, so just be careful with that. So let's talk about the S and P. So the the risk is going to be from 44.10 to 44.25, roughly. So I'm going to write down. Let's go to bias. Forty-four ten to forty-four twenty-five. Okay, so that's going to be resistance. We're bearish until we break above that. I know it's like you go, oh man, how can we be bearish? I mean, look, the you know last day. Remember, guys, we're we're in a wedge, and we're continuously making lower highs and lower lows, and we've come out of a wedge. So we got to stay bearish while we're below. I would say even while we're below forty four thirty, really. I, you know, that's actually the number we should write down. Okay, once we once we break that, and and you guys may you may think you know, hey, we're going to break that. If that's fine, if we break that, then we go into more of a neutral range because now you're making. Oops, shoot, I didn't want to do that. Oh, that doesn't matter. I'll, I'll delete it um, for now. Because what that means is that you're <sighs> grabbing the wrong thing here. Um, you're making higher highs, right? So then, and higher lows. So then, you know, we the net, then shift into more of a neutral range. But for right now, the S&P is still bearish, but it doesn't mean it's going to continue to stay that way. Okay. The euro... The euro dollar is finding some resistance. We continue to make lower highs or lower lower highs here. Um, one sixteen fifty is going to be resistance, right? That's oh shoot, I forgot to do support. One 
1650 is going to be resistance for the euro. We have to stay bearish while below that number. Remember, we've probed this before. You guys got to you guys got to go back to the daily chart and take a look here. Okay? This is previous support. We've broken, we've come back, we've probed it. We've broken, we've come back. I would say we're still probing it. Hey, as long as we hold it below 11650, I would be very it'd be very difficult for me to get get bullish, okay? So right now, you can see the descending trend lines coming into view too, and it's right basically at today's highs. Now, you're going to have support down below. Now that we've had a little bit of a squeeze, you're going to get support down here now. Any any move back down to 115, I would say even 11550, but really, you know, any move back down to 115 and a quarter, you're going to find buyers down there. Whoops, 115. You're going to find buyers down there. Okay. Um, but this should be significant. Now I should finish up with the S and P really quick. So the S and P, the support for the S and P is going to be right here at forty three thirty. But the sterling, okay, sterling is right here against the 618 retracement. It was struggling at the 50% and it it spent days, if you guys don't remember, days knocking its head up against that 50% retracement. So here we are at, a six, at the 618. Right now we're up against further resistance. That should take us right to 137.50. Support is at 136.55 or 136.50 now. So any dip back down there should find support, but I'm going to also write down further support at 135.70. So. Now this, all these numbers have shifted since we've moved up a level. So 3650 will be any support on dips. Now we're got about a 50, we're about a hundred pip range and we're right in the middle of that range. So just keep that in mind. Um, we should find buyers down here at 137 or 13650 now. Aussie up against resistance. This is the, uh, this is above the 78% retracement, this 23%. That's not relevant to us right now that's not relevant actually let's do this okay there i made an adjustment there so the 78 percent retracement's important also this previous support that comes in at 74.25 that should cap the rally today and you know what i'm going to actually flip this back over to range on the sterling because uh, let me go back to the sterling here. I'm going to, you know what? I, I actually should just keep it on bearish because we are continuously, and I know it's like, it's easy to say, oh, but you know, maybe the trend shifted. It might have, but I, we're still making lower highs here. So I, I'm going to keep that. Whoops. I'm going to keep that in bearish. But as far as the, uh, as far as the Aussie goes, you know, it is very much in a range. And we're, you know, pushing some pretty key resistance here. So 74.25, um, just in case we break higher, I'll put 74.80 as resistance. Support now is going to be down here at 7330. Kiwi resistance is going to be right here, 
7053, which is the 618, because we broke above that 70 cent level, the 6980. So remember the Kiwi's always been the outperformer of the Aussie, but it has really been underperforming as of late. So just hold on, did the market just open? Oh, market's about ready to open. Okay. Um 69.90 should be support now on the way down. And you know, we're still range bound in the uh, in the Kiwi. You can see very much range bound, but resistance is coming up and it'll be anywhere between 70.50 and then I'm going to also write 70.85 just in case we get get up there. Support. Okay. Support is going to be down here at 123.75. Resistance should be capped on any move back up here. So this is the, you can see those spike lows. I'm going to move it past the spikes because I'm going to move it to where like, you know, you could see all the bodies or are, are hold up right there and right there. So that's going to be 124.50. That's about where we'd have to get above right now to turn it back to um, to range. Because right now, that's the head and shoulder neckline, and we are below it, even though we're at the 618. And you guys know I am trading counter trend long right now. All right. I took a small position on the long side the last you know couple of days. My average is just above 124, but it is counter trend and I not going to stick around, you know, much below here. So, um, and it's interesting that that's flipped because you know what that means here. Look at the Euro Canadian, just sh share with this with you. Uh, somebody brought it to my attention yesterday. I mean, that is a pretty gnarly looking move, right? I mean, look at the, look at that. Okay. We can actually make it all the way down to 4270 here, you know, in the very near future. So, you know, when you have, when you have the dollar, you got the, the Canadian strong, strong, and the, you know, the um, Euro strong. That's why the Euro US dollar is, you know, um, moving or excuse me with in the uh the euro strong i mean that euro canadian is just you know it could really come under pressure if the euro bounce stalls excuse me la which it is you know look at it this morning it's off you know it's off by 25 pips where the dollar canadian's at its lows so the euro canadian just gets you know slammed back right down towards support Okay, continuing on. Dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss is a bearish breakdown. Um, this is from yields yesterday. So this is another example um, where you look at the Euro Swiss and the Euro Swiss is continues to under pressure, right? So the Swissy broke. I still am going to keep it in the range because it broke that near term, that near term trend line, but really, if you look at it more of a you know longer term, it's just more of a range. So, but it did have a bearish breakdown yesterday. Next support will be 91.50. Should have resistance now on any move back up towards the breakdown point because that's going to be all the support right here. So any any move you get you're gonna have resistance there, but this is where I'm gonna be looking would be ninety two fifty. Okay, dollar Norway. I got stopped out of this thing um, when it broke through the uh, forty five level last night. You know, through this hundred twenty seven percent extension, but the megaphone pattern seems to be holding for right now and you know after getting stopped out i wouldn't be surprised if we just bounce now but 
51, 51 or 52, like I'm going to write down 850, probably like 852. That should be resistance. 841 is support. I'm going to keep it in range um, because, you know, this is a megaphone pattern. If you, and, and, and if you think about this, this is all very much range bound, but through here took out a lot of stops, myself included, you know, because I thought this would hold, you know, through here, because this is the previous handle for the cup and handle pattern, you know, so I thought all this would, would hold, but you know, I think I wasn't the only one. I was, you know, myself and a lot of other people probably just getting stopped out here. But the megaphone pattern is probably the pattern that's going to hold. So if you guys want to be on the long side, that's probably where, you know, where you want to be. All right. Dollar Mex. So the Dollar Mex is holding up relatively well. 840 is going to be support on dips. You know, what's really interesting about all this is this is still bullish. And why, why is that so interesting? Because this is a risk off tool here, right? So, whoops. This is 20. That's why this is so interesting is because the dollar mexican peso and and if you look at the rand which um dominic i know you're listening in right now he's looking at this channel right here i mean when you have you have the uh the the dollar mex and you've got the us dollar south african rand really holding up i mean that's um that's warning us that we sh we should be really careful being on the long side of equities around here that's really what it's telling me Right. So when this is happening, you know, it's really hard for me to be like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's be super bullish um, equities right now while emerging market currencies are so weak. That doesn't make much sense to me. But then again, you know, we're seeing a lot of shifts in the market too. I mean, look at the dollar yen. There's, here's the counter, here's the counter to that argument. The dollar yen continues to hold up 113. One thirteen eighty. That's bullish. Dollar index. As you guys know ninety three seventy, and below that's going to be ninety three fifty. Dollar index is still bullish, and I think it's still bullish while we're above uh, above this breakout point. So just FYI, you know, I'm not going to be bearish the dollar index unless, unless we bre start breaking back below 93.50. This is a near-term setback for the dollar, but I'm not bearish, right? Uh, resistance will be, you know, probably back at this 50% retracement. I mean, we'd have to get, we'd have to get really above all these hourly, you know, spike highs right here, really to get you know, anybody excited about, you know, hey, I need to start being bullish again. That's going to be like 9410. I think that's going to be pretty good intraday resistance. Okay, let's go take a look at precious metals because gold is stalling that trend line. 200 day moving average trend line. So let's write down 1800. Remember for the, like, go back to last week. If you guys keep your bias charts, some, some of you do. If you go back last week, we would, we wrote this and this, right? Now we're here. That's holding us still. That's that trend line. And, and the, the 200 day moving average is right there. Really, I think we need to get above 1810, you know, because then we start taking out these previous high, previous highs. Do I think it's a bullish setup? I do. That's why, you know, I 
did it as a chart of the day yesterday, but right there. I think it's a bullish setup. Silver. Twenty three was resistance. We're above it. Twenty three thirty five. We're finding resistance, and twenty three sixty five is the trend line. Those are about ready to flip to bullish too. Just, but we have to, we have some work to do. Let's go look at Bitcoin. We wrote 59,000 as being resistance. That's significant. You know what else we have to pay attention to here is that we might have made a new high and a false new high, right? So resistance is 59,000 still. And like I mentioned yesterday, we could break into new highs and then reverse. And that's kind of what's happening right now. But 51,000 is going to be support. Okay. All right. So there is your bias chart. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Steve really quick. I'm going to get to the markets. Steve is back from the torrential downpours. <laughs> Welcome back, Steve. Yeah, I just lost power like three minutes ago for half a minute. <laughs> oh, Let's geez. hope it doesn't happen again. All right. All right. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to get to the market. Steve, uh, good luck. And I'll be here. I'll, I'll let it I'll let it broadcast if it sounds like you uh, from my end. If it if it if it sounds like you got knocked off, then um, you know. no, I'm not going to get uh, suddenly knocked off because I have like four UPSs here. But you know, if I go out of power, I have like ten minutes. You know. <laughs> oh, for your battery backup, got it. Yes, right. got exactly. It. So I'm not going right. to suddenly disappear. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. All right, buddy. Well, good luck, and uh, I'll I'll still be here. So, good luck, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, mate. So, uh, hello, everybody. Let me open the chat box and the question box, and then we can have a little bit of a recap, and then we can go over questions. Perfect. So, um, what do we have today? Uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, there are several things to watch out. Um, I'm going to start with... Uh, what I would talk about yesterday, if, if I could make it here, which was the precious metals, right? We talked several times about the precious metals, how they, you know, they're not bullish short term as long as. And then we uh, talked about two specific levels, uh, two specific areas, both in gold and silver. Uh, we're testing both of them today. So here is gold uh, testing the confluence of this descending channel and the 200 daily moving average. Um, almost at the 1800 uh, rounded level as well. And here is silver testing uh, the descending channel as well. So uh, yeah, they both remain bearish as long as we don't break above these levels, but we break above these levels. And in my opinion, things uh, you know can change drastically and very, very fast. Now, You'll have noticed that crude hasn't been doing much for the last three and a half days, which you know isn't really usual for the recent standards. If you notice, the uh, crude oil market has told exactly the 1.7% extension of the last corrective move. In my opinion, this type of price action uh, rarely brings some kind of a reversal lower. This looks to me more like a bullish consolidation before we resume higher with the next upside target being at 86.50. So, you know, take that into account. You'll also notice we had talked several times about this ascending channel determining how deep the corrective move in natural gas can run. And you'll, you've probably noticed that we made an attempt, attempt to break through it on Tuesday, uh, but we retraced all of our uh, intraday losses to close positive on the day. Then we had a nice up day yesterday. And so far today, we also seem to be well bid. So, you know, as long as this trend line support holds, 
there is a chance that natural gas has already found a corrective law, right? Now, I'm not that certain about it, um, but, you know, I think you, for no reason you should be short as long as we don't break through this channel. Now, we break through this channel, I think we open the door for a deeper corrective move towards 450, but until that happens, you have to respect one of the stronger uptrends this year. Also, you'll remember from the day before yesterday that I talked about the importance of copper being on resistance. And I explicitly said, I think I talked about it on Monday as well, not only Tuesday. I think we talked about it both Monday and Tuesday. I explicitly said that, yes, we can reject it once again from there. But in my opinion, copper's correction has already likely run its course. We've already had a significant amount of time uh, spent in consolidating the prior gains uh, in what looks very much as a corrective triangle. Uh, so yesterday, we cleanly broke through resistance. We closed very close to the highs of the day. And today, we're seeing follow through. So just to reiterate here, I don't think you should be trying to fade this. I think you should be trying to um, uh, you know, align yourself with the trend if you want to have any involvement with this market, right? Now, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but the IMF has issued a few warnings during the past few days about inflation not being transitory and monetary authorities globally needing to take action about it. Uh, of course, nobody uh, is really, um, you know, uh, willing to pay attention to it because I, I've explained multiple times that um, central banks are really cornered. Uh, I, I don't even believe they believe inflation is transitory, but uh, you know, if they admit that it's not transitory, they have to do something about it and doing something about it uh, will necessarily mean immediately going back to a recession, right? And politically speaking, since they are political institutions, we know that that's going to be the last thing they're willing to do, right? Uh, so it's it's not a coincidence that you see crude oil, copper, uh, and you know many many other of the commodities. I mean, look at sugar, look at you know the vast majority of them, right? And in my opinion, uh, gold and silver are about to um, uh, are likely about to start uh, a new move higher as well. So I would be very, very careful uh, taking the other side of the market. Now, at the same time, you'll, you've probably noticed that we had a rather strong move yesterday lower in the DXY. Actually, the last three candlesticks in the DXY, I'm not taking into account today's candlestick, simply because it's extremely early in the day. But the three prior to that uh, have already built an evening star formation, right? Uh, so that's that's a rather powerful uh, reversal formation. Now, you know, where do we get some kind of a confirmation that the DXY is breaking lower below 93.50, right? So we remain in the same environment we were uh, since last week, meaning in my opinion, between 93.50 and 94.50, I, I could even say 95. Um, we are more or less in a neutral zone, right? Uh, I mean, things can go either way, but we break below 93.50 or we break below 95. I think we should see follow through in one case to the downside and in one case to the upside. I think the chances are higher for a move to the downside, especially since I'm seeing equity indices um, making an attempt to recover. And we're not far away now from a bullish breakout here either, right? I'm monitoring this descending channel in the S&P. As you see, we're just a few handles away from its trend line resistance. So far, the move lower has been extremely well behaved and orderly. Uh, so. I really have no technical reason looking at this as it currently is to look at it and say, oh, we're about to break lower. 
can we actually break lower? Yes, we can, but the chances are overwhelmingly in favor of uh, having created another shallow correction and breaking higher for another move to the upside. Now, clearly, as you understand, with uh, indices breaking higher, if that's what we end up doing, the DXY is going to have a very, very hard time to actually break through 94, 50, 95 and continue to the upside, right? Uh, we're already seeing several, especially, especially, not only, but especially with the commodity guarantees performing rather well. You see that the Aussie is, for example, approaching once again this descending channel trend line resistance. We're now just a few pips away from it, uh, like 25, roughly 25 pips away from a bullish breakout. You see that the Kiwi is, uh, let's see, a little bit more, something like 70 pips away from a very nice confluence of resistances. This descending channel strand line resistance in the 200 daily moving average both converge roughly at 71 cents. Um, you know, this is a move we can easily produce within a day, right? Even in rather calm conditions like the ones we have. Um, so, we don't have every, absolute evidence yet, but I would say that we're not far away from, um, you know, producing big breakouts in equities, FX, um, uh, monetary metals, so on and so forth. And my gut feeling tells me that, you know, it is a very likely scenario. Right. It hasn't technically been proven yet, but I think it's an extremely likely scenario. Uh, so I'm uh, more or less getting ready for, you know, such an outcome. Right. You'll also have noticed that the USD NOC has finally broken through the 61.8 at 851. In my opinion, there's a very good chance that we, we've already continued uh, lower in this case. I, I've already talked about the USD card having decisively broken lower last week because this is the ascending channel I was monitoring. So some commodity currencies are about to break down, break higher against the dollar, dollar. I mean, some commodity currencies have already done so, like in my opinion, USD card, USD NOC, uh, NOC and card meaning against the dollar. Uh, and with equities being at the precipice of doing the same thing, I see no reason why I would want to fade any of these trends, right? So, yeah, this is more or less a summation of what I'm looking at and what I think is about to happen in the markets. And I'll be more than happy to position myself uh, in, in other markets other than the USD NOC, uh, specifically gold, silver, GDX, um, and why not? I would be more than happy to gain some exposure in the Aussie as well, or the Kiwi. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I think is, is about to happen in the markets. Let's, let's hope that's the case, not for me being in the right side of the market, but mostly to see some trend unfolding, right? Because one way or another, what you want to see in the market is instead of having choppy um, uh, conditions, having some kind of a trend, right? I, I, I don't, at the end of the day, I don't really care that much what kind of a trend that's going to be, as long as the market makes it clear that we have a trend so we can trade it. I mean, fundamentally speaking, I think that the dollar is headed much lower, but I wouldn't even have a problem buying the dollar if the market shows me that technically speaking, we are about to have like a, a nice move in the dollar. But I think we're much closer for the market to technically tell us that we're about to have a nice move lower in the dollar than anything else. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm preparing for something like that. And I, I think it's likely that it's even going to happen this week in the roughly one and a half days that we have left. Right. So let's see. Anyhow, that's it more or less what I had to say. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Hopefully quiet audience today.
inverted head and shoulders formation in Ethereum and crude oil. Uh, having to do with crude oil, uh, I already covered this market. I think that this, this consolidation exactly at the 127% extension is just that, probably a bullish consolidation. And I see as a much more likely scenario, instead of reversing lower from here to break higher and gun for the next upside target, which is the 161.8% extension at 86.46, right? So roughly 86 and a half dollars. Um, that, that's what I think about crude oil. Um, yeah, so I don't think somebody should try to fade it with no real evidence yet that it's about to correct lower. At some point, of course, it's going to correct lower, but in any case, I, I still think that in any type of corrective move is also going to be uh, a buying opportunity instead of you know anything else. Um, now, having to do with the comment about Ethereum, and Ethereum, by the way, has, has been having a very, very nice uh, day to day, uh, having to do with the comment that Ethereum is crafting some kind of an inverted head and shoulders formation. I'm assuming that shoulder, head, shoulder, that's what you have in mind here. Uh, I would have to tell you uh, that if you really want to be looking for bullish formations in Ethereum, there is a bigger one you might want to focus on. And it's this one. Cup and handle. Right, big cup and handle formation here. As you see, we are already testing, almost testing trend line resistance in RSI and trend line resistance in price. Right, so if a theme breaks through, what is it? 3,900, you know, technically speaking, that's going to be a very, very bullish development. Any way you want to look at it, right? So yeah, that's what I think about it. Uh, now having to do with the question about the DAO, the DAO does not have the same formation that the S&P and the NASDAQ have, but it also uh, has produced a corrective formation that's probably going to break to the upside as well. In this case, we have a symmetrical triangle, right? You can see it here. And in this case also, we're, we're getting close to resistance. Resistance is roughly at 35,100, right? So we're currently like less than 300, 300 handles away, which for Dow Jones standards is, you know, uh, easily half a day of move, right? Um, so yeah, I also think that if you have a look at the Dow, you see the same thing that you see in the S&P in a different formation, but the same thing, meaning an orderly type of correction that is more likely to break in the direction of the trend, which is clearly higher, right? Um, and Dimitris is asking for A, B, C. Dimitri, is this the one? Ameris, Ameris Bergen Corporation, is this the one? In NYSE? Or is it this one? I think you want Abcom, right? Oh, yeah, you wrote Abcom. So it's this one in LSE. Yes. Okay, cool. <sighs> yeah. We obviously had a look at it some time ago. And, you know, it looked nice and clean until we started doing this. We had a break higher, this move lower. This one is a little bit tough to read. I have to tell you, though, that even this move lower, right, clearly corrective characteristics, right, you can see it here. Uh, the problem, though, is that we broke higher once again. And there we are creating another consolidation, right? Just after breaking higher. That's not exactly what I would want to see, right? If I was, if I was long this. 
I mean, yes, it hasn't done anything bearish, suffice it to say. So, you know, if I had to be bullish or bearish this, I would definitely be bullish, no questions asked, right? But on the other hand, inability to produce follow through once we broke higher from here, inability to produce more upside once we broke out from here, and just creating another consolidation. RSI, uh, you know, diverging. Yeah, I, I don't know. Looking at this chart, um, as I said, if I had to own it or sell it, I would own it. But, you know, being free to do what I want, I would just be neutral here. Neutral with a bullish bias, but neutral. I wouldn't take a position here as we speak. Right. Now, if you really want to be bullish or if you are long and you're wondering what to do, I would have to say in this case that you can stay long if you're long above this area, above this low. You definitely don't want to see a lower low. Right. So let's say you can be long against uh, 1230, whatever. So, yeah, you can be bullish above that level and hope for the best, all right? That's what I think about it. Anything else? Okay then, don't forget to join Blake in two and a half hours for the daily roundup, my, my pleasure, Baruch. Um, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a lovely afternoon.